the story of James Jerome Hill, the Empire Builder. Down from the edge of the Canadian wilderness came 18-year-old Jim Hill from Rockwood, Ontario. His heart set on reaching the Orient, where he planned to achieve fame and fortune. He worked his way to Philadelphia, but finding no opening, he decided to try the Pacific Coast. So he made his way to St. Paul, Minnesota, the little trading settlement from which trappers started their expeditions to the far west. He arrived late in the fall of 1856. I beg your pardon, sir. Could you put me in touch with the Seattle Expedition? Expedition? Oh, you mean the pack train? Well, I'm trying to reach the Pacific Coast, and they told me I should have less difficulty if I traveled with the traders. Hmm. Must have slipped up on your connections a little. Pack train's been gone for two days now. Oh, that's bad. Well, when does the next train start? Hmm. Afraid you're going to have a pretty long wait, my boy. That was the last trip this season. You mean I'll... I'll have to wait until spring? Why? Oh. What's the matter? You you sick, Sonny? Well, all the money I have is my fare to Seattle, and I, I can't spend it here waiting. I, I'll have to find employment. Would you know anyone who needs a clerk? I have a fair education, and I write a good hand. A clerk? <laughs> well, we call it clerk here. I have an excellent head for figures. Well, uh, I can use a boy in my office. The Dubuque and St. Paul Packet Company. Uh, know anything about Mississippi River steamboats? No, sir, but I think I could learn. I'm very much interested in transportation, and, and speaking of transportation, this business of getting to China, you know, has been most difficult. Well, hmm, you should have been here 40 years ago. Then it was really hard to get around. Uh, how long do I have to wait for the next pack train? Oh, about 10 months, Sonny. But don't you worry. I'm going to put you to work tomorrow. Jim Hill stopped over in St. Paul for a year to await the next pack train and stayed to spend a lifetime. In 1865, he branched out for himself, and a few years later, Norman W. Kitson, agent for the Hudson Bay Company, arranged for Hill to supply the independent trappers with goods. A warm friendship was established between the two men, and in 1872, they formed the Red River Transportation Company, which connected Fort Gary, now Winnipeg, with Ambercrombie, Michigan. Then, in 1873... Well, Kitson, here's our chance. What do you mean, Jim? The railroad. The St. Paul and Pacific is on the rocks. We can get it for next to nothing, extend it to the Red River, and connect with the government line to Winnipeg. We'll send that railroad all the way to the Pacific coast. Transcontinental. How does that sound to you? Ah, you're dreaming, Jim Hill. The St. Paul and Pacific has a debt of $33 million. You'd be mortgaging your life, and for what? It's too big a gamble. This is not a gamble, Kitson. It's an investment in the future of a country with unlimited potentialities. Don't you know that all the northwestern states are practically unsettled? That's rich land, Kitson. Open it up, and we won't have enough cars to carry people in there and haul grain and produce out. I tell you, a railroad's going through there someday, and if we're not in on it, someone else is going to make our fortune. But the money, Jim... Are you coming in on this deal? Well, yes, yeah, certainly I'm in for what I've got. I'm putting every cent I have in the world into it. And I'm counting on George Stevens, president of the Bank of Montreal. And with Donald Smith interested... We should be able to handle it. Stephen and Smith? Well, if they come in, I'm probably lucky to have the chance to get in on the ground floor. Well, we've made Red River Transportation pay. The Great Northern will do the same. You really think we can open up the Northwest Territory, Jim? You think we can put a railroad through there? Think it. The Great Northern will be in Seattle in 1890. <laughs> Northern Railway did reach Seattle, but not until 1893. It was true genius that enabled Hill to extend the first transcontinental railroad across the unsettled plains and mountains without land grants or financial aid from the government. Within ten years, Hill acquired an interest in the Northern Pacific Railroad controlled by J.P. Morgan. They sought an inlet into Chicago through the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad, but Harriman of the Union Pacific also had his eye fixed on the Burlington. Wall Street, New York City, May 1901. Here in Kilo, 
What's it doing? What's happening? Happening? It's the biggest fight of Wall Street. Harriman and Schiff against Morgan and Jim Hill for control of the Burlington. But the market. What's happening to the market? Oh, up, down, crazy wild. I don't know. Nobody knows what's going on. Let's get outside. Come on. All right, let's go. You've got the cover. I tell you, cover, we're finished. But I'm ruined. Every penny I had is gone. Is there no end to this slaughter? People are desperate. Quite up. My life saving. What will I do? I'm ruined. Ruined. Look out. Come back here, you fool. Hold on. Hold on. Stop it. Did you see that? Did you see it? It was delivered. He threw himself under the horses. Well, get him out. Come under. Back away. No. Here, here, here. What's going on? What's going on? He threw himself in front of that wagon office. Ah, he's dead for soul. That's the fault today. It's awful. I've never seen anything like it. Strong men crying and fainting like babies all around us. Ah, it's a terrible day, this. Morgan and Kuhn Lowe of the biggest bankers in this country. In and up to the rear, as I tell you, it was going to be the worst of you. What's that? Shut up. Oh, oh, hell. Hell. Stand back. Oh, Annie. I'm glad you're home, Jim. It's been such an upset day. I, I've been frightened. Yes, Mary. Yes, it's been a bad day. Well, the fight's over. Ended in a draw. Great Northern and Northern Pacific have joint control of the Burlington. But Harriman gets representation on the Northern Pacific board. I, I hope we did the right thing. Oh, Jim, of course you were right. You've put your whole life into opening up the Northwest Territory. You should guide its development. I hung on so during this fight because I... I felt it was better for the country to have the Northern Pacific control of the Burlington than Harriman. But the bill for the battle still has to be paid, dear. I'll do everything in my power to help. But it's going to be far worse than we expected. Darling, you're needed now. They'll all be counting on Jim Hill to keep the line running. And so long as there's work to be done, I know you'll be ready to do your share. Of course, Mary, you're right. But I'm 63. And I've I've got to protect the road. And after all, work is living. Hill established a holding company to administer the road's affairs, but Theodore Roosevelt's big stick descended and the company was wiped out. However, Hill was determined to remove himself from the picture. In 1907, he resigned his presidency of the Great Northern to his son, Lewis, and became chairman of the board. In 1912, he resigned this chairmanship and definitely retired. Meanwhile, the country he had helped develop was growing. In San Francisco in 1915, the Pan-Pacific Exposition was to be held. A committee of five men called upon Jim Hill, now 77, in his palatial home in St. Paul. Sit down, gentlemen. I'll leave you now, dear, and let you discuss your business in peace. Please don't go, Mrs. Hill. I think you'll be interested in our message to your husband. Nonsense, Mary. Sit down. Now, what is it, gentlemen? It's about the San Francisco Exposition, Mr. Hill. Oh, yes, yes. I've read about it. I'd be glad to cooperate with you. For instance, you, you might be interested in borrowing my collection of modern French paintings. That's very kind of you, Mr. Hill, but it wasn't that. Well, perhaps not. A uh, contribution, then. Let's see. I'll donate. Uh, indeed, no, Mr. Hill. We're not soliciting. Well, what is it, then? Mr. Hill, we have not come to ask for your aid this time. We've been appointed as a committee of five to select the most outstanding citizen to represent us at the Panama Pacific Exposition. That's a wonderful idea. But I don't envy you the job. There's some mighty fine men to choose from, and women, too, for that matter. No, we found our task fairly easy, Mr. Hill. We've chosen our representative, and here we have listed his qualifications. He's the man who joined the Pacific coast to the Atlantic seaboard, who conquered mountains and spanned the windswept, arid plains of our country. The man who opened millions of acres of rich land to settlers and brought the people there to live on it. He even installed experts there to teach them how to farm it properly. He bought fine cattle and gave them to the poor immigrants that they might enrich their herds. He put the wisdom of his years of experience into a book, Highways of Romance, to guide us economically. <laughs> well, now, are you by any chance talking about me? He has been honored with a degree of Doctor of Laws by Yale University. 
In 1912, he presented the city of St. Paul with a fine reference library and gave half a million dollars to establish a theological seminary in the same city. James Jerome Hill. Oh, Jim, I'm so proud for you. Well, I... I don't know what to say. It would have taken Robbie Burns himself to tell you how I feel. But I'm... I'm overjoyed, I am. This is an honor, gentlemen. Greatest honor of my life. And so the poor boy who carved his own niche in the Hall of Fame was honored by his friends, his state, and his adopted country. And having reached the heights of success, never failed to extend a helping hand to those who were struggling upward on the road to fame and fortune. James Jerome Hill, the Empire Builder, Captain of Industry. <laughs> <laughs>